The European Union took a big step this week towards passing legislation to regulate AI tools, including ChatGPT. Lawmakers agreed to strengthen draft legislation to include a ban on the use of facial recognition in public spaces and also called for more transparency around programming and use of generative AI. Here in the U.S., that discussion has been playing out largely on the state level. Let's dive deeper on this with Goli Madavi, Data Privacy and Security Council member at Brian Cave Layton Paisner. We've also got our very own Alexis Keenan joining in on the conversation. Uh, Goli, it is interesting, you know, we should preface this by saying that, look, conversations around regulation about AI have been going on for years, but it does feel like the developments around uh, ChatGPT have really accelerated that. To what extent has that raised the urgency? Well, we are absolutely at an inflection point. We have mass adoption of AI tools across enterprise. We are seeing now consumers jumping to use generative AI tools like ChatGPT. They have something like 100 million monthly average users. And so legislatures and legislators are feeling a real push, uh, feeling pressure to put laws in place to protect consumers. Goli, it's Alexis here. Uh, by the end of this year, we will have had seven states in the United States that have enacted laws that protect consumers and job applicants against what they perceive as threats of AI, things like whether to offer insurance to uh, an applicant, whether to offer a job, uh, things like loan products, financial products. Um, what exactly are these states that have enacted these laws? And can you give some more specifics as to their guardrails? Absolutely. And so we can group the consumer privacy protection laws in California, Colorado, Virginia, and Connecticut together because they generally follow the same framework. These laws, which apply to the use, collection, and sharing of personal data, also regulate artificial intelligence tools to the extent that these tools make automated decisions uh, that impact consumers in the areas of health, insurance, uh, financial services, employment, and housing. In other words, automated decisions that are impactful. And so what we see under these uh, consumer privacy laws is that where businesses use automated decision-making tools in these high-risk areas, they need to provide notice to consumers that they're doing so. And within that notice, they need to provide a description of the logic that is used by these tools. They need to provide consumers with choice. Consumers need to be able to opt out of having their personal data used in connection with automated decision-making. Also, businesses will need to perform impact assessments. In other words, they need to look at the benefits that the use of automated decision-making tools provides to the organization and to consumers, as well as the potential risks in using these tools, and then implement mitigations to minimize the harm to consumers in using these tools. And so this is what we see in terms of the consumer privacy laws. And then we have a handful of employment related laws that are specific to hiring and promotion. We see that Maryland and Ireland both have existing laws on the book that impact the ability of a company to use uh, facial recognition software in Maryland uh, during the course of an employee's interview in Illinois, it's related to using AI technology in connection with videotaped interviews. And of course, New York City is grappling with its own law right now, which governs generally the use of automated employment decision tools uh, in the course of making employment decisions. Goli, you mentioned their uh, assessments for uh, risk and compliance are part of these laws. I'd like you to explain whether uh, you think there's a particular industry or industries that face the most uh, challenges in terms of complying with these laws, even though we're not at the point where we have a federal law on the books. Well, anytime you're grappling with a patchwork of state laws, it kind of brings the compliance risk up because there is no universal standard by which companies can tie their compliance programs to. In terms of industries that are likely to be more heavily targeted, of course, regulators are focused on automated decision-making where those decisions impact consumers in a very real or legal way. And so again, we're talking about housing, employment, 
insurance, criminal justice. And so that's really where regulators are going to be focused. Um, Goli, you mentioned sort of the compliance risk that comes with a fragmented approach, which is what we're seeing right now. I mean, how much muscle is this? Is there really behind this legislation if there's nothing at the federal level? Well, you know, enforcement is going to be important, and that really remains to be seen. We know that in California, there is a dedicated consumer privacy agency that has its own budget, and they are currently staffing up. So we can expect that come July, uh, when the enforcement date comes, there will be an enforcement sweep. So we know at least in California, companies should expect that there will be active enforcement of consumer privacy laws and AI legislation. The other states are going to be governed, obviously, by those states attorneys general. And it's not clear at this point whether or not those laws have adequate budget and staffing to really go after the bad actors. Goldie Madavi with Brian Cave, Layton. Appreciate you walking us through what is a very complicated landscape right now. And our thanks to Alexis Keenan as well. Thank you.